Hey, welcome to NASA Launchpad. I'm your host, Audrey Staples. As we've mentioned before on Launchpad, NASA doesn't just do work in space. The vast majority of NASA's workforce is right here on Earth, and there's a lot of work going on to understand our own planet. Our planet is made up of unique communities known as biomes. How do you determine what makes up a biome? Well, for the answer, let's head out to Arizona and check out the amazing structure that is Biosphere 2. B2, as it's known, is currently operated for environmental research by the University of Arizona. So let's hear about biomes from Matt Adamson, Biosphere 2's program coordinator for education and outreach. So a biome is uh, a major geographical region on Earth that contains its own unique or distinctive sets of plant and animal life. So you have things like savannas, oceans, deserts, tropical rainforests. All of these would be considered major geographic regions with their own unique plant and animal life. Inside Biosphere 2, the biomes we have are all either tropical or subtropical in nature. And so we have things like a tropical rainforest, a savanna, which is a grassland, a coastal fog desert, and we do have our own saltwater ocean. Ecologists use patterns of climate, looking at factors like temperature and precipitation, as well as the kinds of plants or animals that live in an area to divide the world into different biomes. And although every kind of biome on Earth is not represented in this amazing structure, each biome and biosphere too is based on an actual biome here on Earth, complete with smaller ecosystems. And the biomes inside Biosphere 2 make it an ideal place for research. But what exactly is being studied? I'll let Matt explain. There is a fundamental question about that connects terrestrial ecology to global climate change. And we want to study the sensitivity of key terrestrial biomes as they relate to variability in global climate change. By running uh, both drought and warming experiments in this controlled ecosystem, we expect to gain a more mechanistic understanding of the future response of tropical rainforests to climate change from the individual plant level all the way up to the level of an entire ecosystem. Okay, we know that all living things are closely related to their environment. Any change in one part of that environment can cause a ripple effect throughout the other parts. And B2 uses biomes in the world to learn about those ripples. But why rainforest, especially the largest one in the world? the Amazon rainforest in South America. So the Amazon is of interest because it's one of these key sensitive terrestrial biomes I mentioned in that it contains unparalleled biological diversity, it contains a globally significant store of organic carbon, and it is a potent engine that drives the water and climate cycle on Earth. I understand why the University of Arizona wants to learn more about biological diversity or the variety of life found here on Earth. But how does NASA fit into all of this? So our significant rainforest research really is connected to two key legacies of the large-scale biosphere atmosphere experiment in Amazonia that was funded in large part by NASA. So essentially what that means is we're taking data that NASA has already paid for through other projects and using it to compare to responses in our rainforest here, which is in the controlled setting, so that when we're changing things like gases in the atmosphere, temperature, reducing uh, precipitation when we put them through droughts. We then can compare this sort of control data to real world data that NASA's collected through these, for example, these, these um, flux towers that are collecting data throughout the Amazon. So sort of a synthesis of real world data collection and controlled world data collection. Talk about having a great setup to change an independent variable observe the results, or dependent variable, and compare those results to real-world data. I guess those aren't just words in your textbook. Now, what about a specific example of this research? One that is underway and has been for some time is a study of volatile organic compounds in the atmosphere of the rainforest biome. And volatile organic compounds essentially are the 1% of our atmosphere. If you consider that 78% of our atmosphere is nitrogen, 21% is oxygen, the remaining 1% or less are things that we would think of as greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, um, ethanol, things like that. And the person who's studying VOCs in our rainforest is particularly interested in the natural production of ethanol in rainforest systems. So we're actually collecting gas samples from the rainforest and then analyzing them in his lab. He hopes to get a baseline understanding of natural production of ethanol because if we think about moving to ethanol as an alternative energy source. So as we power automobiles, for example, with ethanol instead of gasoline, 
Well, it could be that we're substituting one greenhouse gas, CO2, for another in, in ethanol. And so he wants to understand some of the natural occurring ethanol before we as human beings perhaps start putting a lot of industrial produced ethanol into the atmosphere. So that's one example of how we're using our rainforest to study natural processes, and in this case, um, an analog to the Amazon. It just goes to show you, the scientific process is never complete. Scientists are continually making observations, collecting data, predicting results, and analyzing their findings. That's it for now. I'm Audrey Staples. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time on NASA Launchpad.